My next guest has tales to tell as well. A soap star for many years, but he's lived a life worthy of its own soap opera. Bruce Jones grew up in Manchester, came to be one of the biggest personalities in Coronation Street as Les Battersby. Brilliant character. But the events before, after and during his time in Coronation Street are really quite remarkable. He's overcome some incredible barriers in his life. Alcoholism, depression, bankruptcy, to name but a few. And he's just published his biography, Les Battersby and Me, and he joins me now. Bruce Jones, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Um, it does one line about this book. It says, uh, more dramatic twists than a week of Coronation Street. It's certainly that, isn't it? Well, I tried to be as honest as I could when I did the book, so, yeah, probably right. It is very dramatic, even from, from early days. I don't know um, how you feel about it. It talks about um, you nearly dying of rheumatic fever at the age of 10 mm-hmm. and a tragic death of a friend following a childhood game. What, what happened there? Well, we used to play a game on the river called Chicky, and it was like a little way. And we'd run across the way, and this little lad wouldn't do it. We're only kids. And uh, one day we got called on. Well, we didn't get called on. We knew we had to go on for our tea. And he, didn't, he wasn't come with us. And we, we couldn't get him to come with us, so we left him. And he ran away on his own one, but no one there. And he fell in. Um, and that's the last we What age was, was, was he then? We about seven, eight, something like that. We were only kids. So that I presume there was the uh, parents having to go looking for him. My God, where did you go? Well, back? the police that, what, the police came about two hours late, knocked on the door and said he was missing. And where would where did we see him? We told him where we'd seen him, and he found him later on down the down in the river. Oh found. God, what a hor- horrible, horrible story. Um, it sounds like the whole thing was very traumatic. And in one point, it says you were saved by drama. Is that is that putting it to? Yeah, I'd actually gone to a. Uh, grammar school I got expelled from there and uh, and then my mother didn't know what to do and uh, things at home weren't good so I was the oldest of six children and uh, I'd got a bit violent in my my, my my youth and then they sent me to a second in modern school I didn't really fit in there and uh, I was being every bell against that one as well and I was getting kicked out of there when this teacher Miss Brown uh, as the end must have given me and I went with her and I went straight to drama and that, that was I, I just found that's what I wanted to do drama the place that, where you wanted to be really yeah I actually she actually saved me from probably a life of crime right God you could have been a bad one then I could have been yeah very easily were you drinking at that point no 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 I was at school no I wasn't drinking then. oh I'll tell you we're telling stories this morning of people drinking at school Bruce, being no doubt, being in school doesn't mean not drinking anymore. Um, <laughs> you, you went on then, you have to say, um, a, a very uh, successful and fantastic life. Uh, Ken wrote, Ken Loach, you worked with him? Yeah, I did. Uh, my first film was with Ken. I've done like uh, big parts in TV series and I've done so many TV commercials. And one commercial I did was with Ken Loach for a washing up uh, liquid, uh, <laughs> a bath cleaning or something, another commercial. Really? And uh, I got on so well with him that he said he'd see me again. A year later, he called me for auditions for Rainy Stones. Yeah. I went through about six or eight auditions with, with certain people, Ricky Thomas and Julie Brown, and the great Irish actor who became the priest in, in the Tom Thompson, that I can't remember his name, but he was a lovely, lovely man. The Irish actor, then he played the priest who I confessed to in the beginning yeah. of the film. And, uh, yeah, the film won me European Actor of the Year, and won me a lot of accolades and I went on from there I went to right. next, and I was in every drama series going you yeah, certainly happy. were you were in the hard we touch a frost band of gold celebrity star of the rise band of gold yeah how did Corey come about well I was doing a film with uh, a guy called Sh- Shane Meadows you know he does Little Britain and yeah. all of them I called 24-7 with Bob Hoskins and funnily enough halfway through that I got a two week break and I went to Sheffield and did the full month uh, cameo to Full Monty and, yeah. uh, and as I got back from Sheffield I went back to Nottingham to finish off filming 24-7 yeah. Bob Hoskins has asked me would I go to America with him and I, I sort of regretted not doing that now but and I said yeah I'd love to and, uh, but then I got a phone call off my agent on in Ireland and he said that uh, you need to be at Granada Friday night at 6 o'clock I said no one's no auditions at 6 o'clock on a Friday night the place is shut because I'd been down to audition for a new TV series they were going to make called The Chain Gang. Yeah. About uh, civil engineers on the road doing tarmac and stuff and everything. And I got there and he took me to the uh, Victorian Albert Hotel. 
the producer at the time and Judy Afield, one of the best casting directors I've ever worked with. Yeah. And uh, they took me to this little hotel and they, they wind and dine me and talk to me and talk to me about Rainy Stones and other stuff. I've been in. And about two hours later, I turned out, I just, why am I here? I've got to get back to Nottingham. And she said, he'll tell you in a minute. Went back to the bar, come back with another bite of Guinness. Yeah. And we sat chatting away and he said, and he's, then he got to me, he said, we're, we're, we're going to, we want to invent this family for this TV series. And he told me about the family. Good Lord, who's going to play that? <laughs> Who the hell is going to have the guts to play that? Yeah. I mean, that's about all the family you're talking about. Yeah. What what TV series is this for? I'm going to ask you. He mumbled down. Excuse me, can you say that again? <laughs> and he says, Coronation Street. I said, no way am I playing that in Coronation Street. I've watched it since I started in 1960 with my grandmother. Yeah. And to play a family like that in Coronation Street, you'd be aced. Yeah. So eventually, by the end of the night, I did convince so I said, okay, I'll do it in six months and uh, then I'm out of there. Yeah. And uh, they signed me on a six month contract, but they got me on a roll in six months as well. So that meant right. if the six month work, they could keep me for another six months. Okay. And, uh, well, the first two years, we were hated. I'd say you were, because it seemed we like. Yeah, it was, it was a family that had almost more of an East Enders feel to it coming in. Oh, more... I'm with the there was no other family in the world like him in the soap. There was no... I mean, they, they came after with EastEnders and you got, and Emmerdale brought the Dingles in and yeah. EastEnders brought their family in. And uh, But we were like the first most hated family in the soap. And for two years, we, we couldn't work around Manchester. We couldn't go out. We, yeah. we were... We, I used to sneak out when I'd get home from the local pub and people would look at you and think... You could see what they were thinking, yeah. you know. You know, say man in Britain at the moment, what you what you're doing in here, like you know. Yeah, hard to People distinguish. Were, were a bit hard to talk to. You yeah. know, your mates were there with you, but yeah. it must um, have been life changing, though. I mean, that that's it's it's a level of fame where it's not just that they know you, but they feel you're part of their family almost. Uh, oh, very, you're in very house, hard you're to distinguish. Three nights a week. Yeah, and and you're Les. You're not Bruce anymore. No, you are. You become that character. You yeah. become Les, and I try. Uh, I never, I never went out with a lot of actors. I used to go out with my, my mates from I worked with them from a kid, and, and I try to stay feet on the ground and just go out with my mates. But that backfired on you. I wasn't one for talking to the press. Yeah, and uh, that they sort of armoured me because I wouldn't talk to them basically. And uh, yeah. In fact, I'm not so sure now whether I should set my phone to the police and see if man's been at because a lot of stuff uh, went in there was on was on a yeah. phone. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. Um, when yeah, yeah, at that point, you'd have to say you were you were married, you had four kids, don't you? And um, money, fame. What, what started to happen? How did it kind of go wrong, basically, for you? After ten years, I, 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 I Vicky, Vicky, they split me and Vicky up, which I, I found hard to. to, to so then I went with the great Wendy Peters. She was a wonderful actress. I, I was lucky yeah. to work with two wonderful, wonderful actresses, yeah. plus the two girls as well. And uh, but I never got the family for me was Vicky and Bruce and Jane. It was it was Les and, and Janice. Yeah. And even though I loved my time with Wendy Peters, when she left, there was nowhere for Les to go. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, what I, about I, I, your own was, life, though? What you know, you know that, that I was never home. Actually, I was going to work. I was up at five in the morning. I was yeah. going to work till say seven, eight, nine at night. I got the lucky day where I could come home at nine in the morning. Maybe yeah. go in at seven, finish at nine in the morning. Right. Come home and then I'd go for a pint in the afternoon with my mates. And uh, my wife was getting a bit sick of this. You know, when you're home, you go for a pint. When you're not home, you're working. Yeah. So I was breaking all the bonds of life. Really, I wasn't fulfilling my home life with my work life. Right. I was breaking away from both. If you if, if, yeah. if you understand that, yeah, I was trying to write poetry and stuff, and I couldn't do. I couldn't get my head around anything. Okay, and I started. To, then I then I got then when I did leave, the, the papers about sex and all that was wrong. It was a mutual agreement that it was time for me to go. And yeah, after ten and a half years, I really I remember feeling so free when I walked out the doors. It took me three days to leave. It was three days of conversation, three days of negotiation three days of but I knew there in the end of my heart if I, if I don't go now yeah um, there's, there's I'd, the very, end up, I'd end up I'd end up going, I, don't, I don't know what I'd end up doing there's the very famous incident in the car with your wife uh, where you grab the traffic oh. the, the steering wheel um, yeah that, that's very close to the wire isn't it yeah it was uh, depression mainly depression I've been away from depression and I've, I've talked about depression a lot now and I think anyone that's feeling a depression coming up Talk to the nearest person to you right away. Yeah. Your, your, your most nearest person, if it's not your husband, go and talk to your mum. If it's not your mum, your daughter, or someone, your best friend, go and talk to them and then go and see a doctor.
doctor with them. Don't go on your own with depression, because you'll hide it. Yeah. You will deny it. As soon as you get in that doctor's office, you're full of it, you're going to go in there, you're going to tell him everything. Once you sit down and face that doctor, you will lie your head off. There is nothing wrong with you. Yeah. You know, That's I've been true. through that. So anyone, anyone with that feeling, talk to your best mate, get them a go with you. Get them a what? In the end, I went with my wife. My wife came with me. Right. And uh, she opened up some doctor. And then I went on this course for depression. Right. Stayed away from drink. Drinking alcohol, drinking depression do not mix. No, I think they're definitely it's anything makes you there. worse. Um, it's an incredible story. Uh, it just, it really does, re- it's, at times it's hard to believe that it's not actually an episode of, of the soap you're reading. In it is an incredible story, which uh, I'm sure will capture everyone's attention. You, you um, were one of the people who came across the body of one of Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper's victims. Mm-hmm, the well, worst one. How did that happen? Well, I remember this story breaking and it broke in Ireland. Uh, I'd never spoke about it for, for nearly 20 years and I, I did the Late Late Show in Ireland. Yeah. And uh, I was leaving the Late Late Show when Gary Burns said to me, is it true you found one of the Yorkshire River buddies? And I'd had enough. I think that was depression in itself. I've yeah. that in my head all the years, not yeah. speaking about it. Yeah. And I think I totally had enough. And I sat down and said, I'll tell you about the Yorkshire Ripper. And I explained everything I found. Yeah. The disemboweled body, the, the, the breast burnt off, all the hair burnt off, the face smashed in with hammers. When he couldn't kill, he went back and mutilated that body. And he was in the bushes the day I found it, because I'd been over that girl six times with a wheelbarrow. And then I'd gone back, saw his face in the bushes, looked down and there was the body. It looked like a tailor's dummy, but... Yeah, it was Jean. It was Jean. It was Jean Royal. Jean Jordan. Jean, Jean Royal. Yeah, you you had you'd gone over it in a wheelbarrow. Yeah, I'd been building a shed. Me and my mate had an allotment on the, the Summer Cemetery allotments, and uh, I, I was I was the youngest of the two, so I, I agreed to work with. There was a, there was an old site across the way from where we were building our allotment and shed, and there was a lot of bricks there, so I was getting the bricks for the base of the shed, and uh, that's when I found her after about oh, seven times, six okay. times walking back there. She was there. Looks up, there's the face in the bushes. It took me six months to remember that face. In fact, I had to phone the police and said, I've got the face in my head. Then they're describing with the beard, the black eyes. and His eyes were so black, he, that, that's what I remember. Well, in my nightmares, I, 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 I all saw the black eyes. Did you Did you uh, also meet later, uh, Peter Sutcliffe himself? Did I meet him? Yeah. No, no, if I met him, I think I'd have killed him. I think, yeah, many many people would have done the same. Uh, yeah, um, there's one thing, there was something I must say about that. There was 13 of us, you know, there wasn't just me, there was yeah. 13 people found the Oxford Ripper. Yeah. And from, as far as I know, allegedly, I know, I've been told that two of them people have, have committed suicide. I hope that's not true. Allegedly, I've been told that, but right. I hope that's not true. Because um, I know what they've gone through. I know exactly what them people have gone through. On the night of the Late Late Show, were you a bit put out that Gabe Warren asked you about it? Pardon? Were you a bit put out that Gabe Warren asked you? I was. I was quite. I was quite annoyed. But then, uh, my wife was with me that night as well, so I was quite happy with that. And uh, I, I came out with it. And apparently, all, all of Ireland watched that because I, I went and met Paddy O'Hearn the next day, invited me to lunch. Uh, and Bertie O'Hearn. Bertie, yeah, Bert, yeah. Bertie O'Hearn paid for you to stay in a five-star hotel. I'm told. Uh, yes, he did actually. He put us up for the night and put us on the. We made lunch with him and his wife and. They said stay here tonight and have, a, and have a drink and just enjoy yourself. All right. Well, I've got you're... lots of thank you, Ireland. For, I love Ireland. My grandmother was Irish. Yeah. Can... Right. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. I lived with my grandmother for a lot of years. And she was from County Cork. Oh, not very good. Um, Ken Loach was on the show, had views on Bertie Aaron as well. They weren't good ones, though. Uh, unlike yours. <laughs> oh, I don't have any political views. I think that's one thing in my life I don't, I don't agree with political views. All oh, right. People would wonder where the money... Anyway, um, but an incredible story. How are you at the moment? Um, I'm fine. I'm writing a lot of poetry at the moment. I'm trying to write poetry. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a children's book. Uh, I'm researching now. I was at the library yesterday. Very good. I actually went for a pint last night. My wife let me go out for a pint last night. I thought she went shopping. She went, you went for a pint. Are you here. allowed to have a pint? Yeah, of course I am, yeah. It's, uh, I've not been out all week, so I get, get out of the house. Is it not a matter of being an alcoholic that you can never have a drink again? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not alcoholic. I can leave that. I mean, I'm not been out for the last two okay. weeks, so uh, All right. I just like to get out. If I write a lot, I just like to get out and go and see right. my mates. Have a, have a few beers with them, and mainly the football. I like to watch the football with the lads. Right. So, well, if you're trying to write, picks, my wife picks me up after a thing, and that's it. Oh, you go. Never go out. Never go out of a night. Yeah. Never go out of a night now. All right. I've got an afternoon for a, you know after break at work. It's like one okay. day, maybe Fridays or. Well, if you're trying to write a, ch- a children's book, we're going to be talking to Julia Donaldson later on, the the author of the Gruffalo. 
which is uh, one of the defining children's books, Bruce. So, yes, I've heard about that, yeah. Uh, I should, I should look, my kids have read that book. Wonderful book. But uh, yeah. listen, Bruce, your book is very wonderful as well, and very Thank honest you. too. Les Battersby and me. Uh, Bruce, thanks very much for talking to us this morning. Thank you, and can I say hello to Ireland, and thank you, Ireland, because you've, uh, you've been really good to me, Ireland, and I think I will to Ireland. You're very kind. Bruce, thanks thank very you. much indeed. Um, thank you, sir.